Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Elliot, a junior doctor in the UK that's specialising in psychiatry. And on this video, I'm doing another reaction video. We're looking at an old school episode of Scrubs that's all about OCD. See, there's a visiting professor coming today who's both a medical attending and a surgeon. Two specialties. And to us, that kind of makes him... Super duck. Super duck. Fine. A super doc with obsessive compulsive disorder. So OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder is actually probably more common than you might think. It affects around one to two percent of the population and people get obsessions. So very intrusive thoughts, imagery, doubts, impulses that creates a lot of anxiety. And the way that people then try and relieve that anxiety is by performing these repetitive acts called compulsions. The relief, though, is only temporary and it inevitably just keeps coming back again and again and again. Okay, okay. How hard can it be for me to step in your left foot first and simultaneously exhale as my right foot plants? How hard? Not that hard? Exactly. Shaved head guy. It's obsessions around ordering and symmetry that actually can be some of the most severe types of OCD and the most resistant to treatment. Don't completely know why, but it's a common pattern. Dr. Kevin Casey. Dr. Kevin. Casey, you know at my hospital they don't make you sign forms if you want to cut open sick people, you just have to bring your own knifey thingy. Scalpel. That's the word, Dr. Kevin Casey. Why do you keep saying your name? Oh, it just keeps me from losing my uh, jinkies later, thinking I forgot something. Okay. Dr. Kevin Casey. If you don't act on the obsession by doing the compulsion then the anxiety can be completely overwhelming. Now the compulsion itself often on the outside can look really really odd but once you know the obsession then the compulsion kind of makes sense because usually somebody is doing a compulsion to try and undo the obsession. So for example if the obsession is about dirt and contamination the compulsion is going to be about cleaning. If the obsession is about ordering and symmetry then the compulsion is going to be about positioning things and doing the same acts over and over again until you get it exactly right. Holy cow get out of dodge. T tell me this are you are you shaking hands nowadays? Well lifetime of therapy and uh, a lot of Zoloft. Just so I can appropriately greet you, big guy. <laughs> oh, boy. I do have a three second limit. Boy, who doesn't? Zoloft is the brand name for the SSRI called Sertraline. It's one of the most common drugs that we use in OCD because it can reduce the frequency and the intensity of these obsessions and therefore reduce the anxiety and the need to do the compulsion. The other SSRI that is pretty effective for obsessions is one called Escitalopram. The therapy that we use in OCD is a subtype of CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. Specifically, the type that we use is called Exposure and Response Prevention. This involves being exposed to the obsession, feel the anxiety, but you're prevented from doing the compulsion in response to that anxiety. You have to sit with the anxiety and tolerate it. It teaches your brain that actually catastrophe probably won't happen if you don't do the compulsion and means that you need to try and find new and more constructive ways of managing that anxiety. You start really small, maybe with just imagery and imagining situations and then gradually build up to even more anxiety provoking things, even up to things like, you know, cleaning a toilet, for example, without washing your hands again and again and again and again. Well, I never thought I'd see that guy again. I mean, he had to drop out of our residency class because of the god-awful severity of his condition. Problem with compulsions is that they can be directly harmful. So for example, using cleaning products on your hands over and over again can cause dermatitis. They can be incredibly time consuming to the point that actually you don't really have time to do much else with your life. And that affects work and relationships and lots of other things, even sleeping and eating. And doing the compulsions again and again just reinforces it as an anxiety management technique, which in the long run makes the condition worse. You know, I couldn't have survived in medicine if I didn't embrace my OCD. And since I was compulsive anyway, you know, I, I read the same textbooks over and over. I, uh, I went through the procedures over and over. I imagined every worst case scenario over and over and over and over and over Dr. and Casey. over and over and over and Dr. over. Casey. Dr. Casey. Kevin Casey, okay. thank you. Yeah. Even though my crazy brain made me do those things, it's still the best advice I can give to any young doctor. Expect the unexpected and you will never be surprised. Expecting the unexpected in medicine is about right. You do have boring days on occasion, but the moment that you're usually hoping it's going to be a dull and boring day because you can get other stuff done or you're just really, really tired is the moment that chaos usually ensues. As doctors, we're scientists, but we're also strangely superstitious. What the hell? He's anemic and he has bone fractures, yet there's no sign of leukemia. 
You don't diagnose leukemia off of a CT scan. You need blood tests and a bone marrow biopsy. Come on, Dr. Cox. You know, I'm really looking forward to seeing you in action, sir. Takes a lot to make the big dog sit up and take notice. <laughs> I believe the word you're looking for is holy crap. Holy crap! A laparoscopic cholecystectomy is keyhole surgery to remove the gallbladder, usually in the context of infection and inflammation. Um, it is, without a shadow of a doubt, the most boring surgical procedure I have ever watched and assisted with. Hands down. Dull as ditch water. JD, do you want to get a beer tonight? Do chickens wish they could fly? I have no idea. <laughs> I like to think they do. So do I. Okay, class, we have a guest with us at Rounds today. He happens to be an old friend of yours truly, so let's all go out of our way to treat him with the respect he deserves. Okay. Hey, gang, my name is Dr. Anyway, Kim I K thought we'd change things up a little bit today. Instead of me firing questions at you, I'd like to see you all scurry away and get your textbooks. And when you get back, you actually get to quiz us. A little harmless competition, if my colleague here will consent to it. <laughs> I'm sorry, you done with this speech, you fine? Hmm. I'm kidding, you frightening bastard. Uh, okay, buddy, buddy, buddy. <laughs> Yo, buddy, funny, buddy, funny, buddy. Go get your bucks! Try not to touch me as much. <laughs> Dr. Cox is such a dick. <laughs> I just don't understand why this guy bothers him so much. Carla, Perry is a dysfunctional, unsuccessful, emotionally damaged old man. No offense, sweetie. I'm taking it. Being the best doctor here is the only thing he had to hang his hat on. Dr. Cox is incredibly narcissistic. This exaggerated sense of self-importance that also comes with a need to be validated by others. He's even more narcissistic than most doctors and, you know, there's a few of us about. Pay attention to me, don't you know how great and amazing I am? With narcissism, it can often lead to jealousy. It doesn't take much for a bit of competition to come along and then make her come face to face with the fact that maybe you're not the best at the thing that you thought that you were the best at. Bruises the old ego. Look, I did my psych rotation, okay? I know my father abandoning us and only showing up in my life when he needs a place to sleep or a free prostate exam is probably gonna be an issue. I get it, but it's not like I'm looking for a, a mentor. I just want a little validation. It's like when Kelso gave you a cupcake because you went four days without killing a baby. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> JD has so many daddy issues and great hair. Don't get me wrong, great hair. Daddy issues and great hair. I think when rational men are forced to face their shortcomings, they all do the same thing. Blame Kevin Casey. Who gave him the right to judge me? Because I sure didn't. I'll give him a piece of my mind, see how he likes it. Blaming other people for your own shortcomings and vulnerabilities is a really common psychodynamic defense mechanism. It's called projection. Sometimes we're aware that we're doing it, sometimes we aren't. Found him. Brace yourself, mister. You're about to get an earful JD style. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. Uh, g g give me a minute, will you? No, Kevin, I have to talk to you right now. Damn it! Later's cool, too. I'm sorry, I just... I... Look, I spent the last few days meeting new people and trying to get used to this place, and I'm stressed and I'm fried. This is really poignant because it really humanizes OCD um, and shows you what a debilitating condition it can really be. Like any form of anxiety related disorder, when you have any other stress that goes on in your life, it can make the symptoms of a disorder like OCD flare up to a much bigger degree. And as much as we've talked about the physical harms from you know affecting your sleep and your eating and damage to your skin, at the crux of it, it is utterly exhausting. I just wanna go home. But here's the punchline. Even though my last surgery was two hours ago, I can't stop washing my damn hands. Ah! I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, this is a weak moment. Nobody's supposed to see this. And uh, mark my words, I'll clean up the soap. Probably several thousand times. Everyone's got their own burdens, JD. And I'm not gonna be one of those people that dumps mine on somebody else. Now, what do you need? What a brilliant episode. I thought it was strangely accurate for the most part, apart from the leukemia thing, but about OCD, 
really accurate, humanizes it. Um, really good piece of telly. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you think there's anything else that I should be watching on mental health stuff in the media. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you very soon for the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.